Ed Miliband, the Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change, has announced that no new coal power stations will be built in the UK without carbon capture and storage technology. I asked Greenpeace coal campaigner Joss how we got to this policy change and what it means for the Greenpeace coal campaign. Well, what we have to remember is that six months ago, the government and E.ON wanted to build a completely unabated, dirty coal-fired power station at King's North that wouldn't capture any of its emissions, that wouldn't have any conditions, basically. And what this announcement from Ed Miliband signifies is that actually Greenpeace and the coalition that's been campaigning on coal have now won the argument that business as usual emissions isn't an option. And so, whereas the debate before was whether or not to allow new coal stations to go ahead with no conditions, now the whole debate has moved on to, okay, obviously we can't do that, so what's going to be the best way forward from here? And so that signifies like a massive step in the right direction. On the other hand, we're still talking about a power station that is going to emit huge amounts of CO2 for years to come. And so for, the government seems to be saying that for every tonne of carbon they want to capture from day one, they think it's fine for three tonnes to be emitted. And clearly, that doesn't fit within a scientific framework. What Ed Miliband's saying is that any new coal-fired power station that's built in Britain from now on would have to capture about a quarter of its emissions um, from day one, and that by 2020 or 2025 at the latest, it would have to be scaled up to full emissions. But it was full of caveats and huge question marks, like old coal, what happens to Drax? No one's talking about old coal at the moment, even though the government's own advisors, the Committee on Climate Change, say that old coal needs to be firmly at the centre of this discussion. Secondly, what happens if CCS, for whatever reason, um, isn't, can't be scaled up by 2020? What happens if we're left with years and years and years of unabated dirty coal for you know, potentially 30 or 40 years, the lifespan of one of these coal plants? Are they really saying that if CCS can't be scaled up and be economically viable by 2020, they're just going to let these, these power stations continue belching CO2? Or are they saying that they're going to shut down these power stations that generate huge amounts of Britain's electricity? And as I say, the big frustration is that there are proven technologies which can deliver cuts in emissions and energy security, like renewable energy, like energy efficiency. And so it is a, it's frustrating that we're having to have this discussion around coal when actually you know, independent research from the energy consultancy Poiri shows that we, Britain could meet all of its energy needs between now and 2020 without any new fossil fuel capacity. But if you just consider how far we've come in that three years, I mean Greenpeace were, was the first organisation to flag the fact that, um, that Kings North was being proposed and I remember Jim Footner um, who works on the energy team here coming into the office and, being, and saying God, have you seen that E.ON wants to build a new coal-fired power stations? We need to make this famous. And it's gone from being a dull local planning issue to really a litmus test of the government's commitment to tackling climate change. That's been incredible to watch as, you know, activists went on trial for shutting down Kings North and then be acquitted on the basis that they were acting to prevent catastrophic climate change. And to see the Rainbow Warrior um, have on board Oxfam and the Women's Institute and Christian Aid and all these groups that have really, you know, um, started to work on Kings North because it represents such a social justice issue as well, as well as an environmental one. And so to see all this momentum gathering, I think the next few weeks and months are going to be critical because now we've won the argument with government and they've acknowledged that business as usual isn't an option. We need a cast iron guarantee that we're not going to see new power stations emitting high levels of CO2 for years to come and we don't have that yet, but I would say we're halfway there.